what's happening guys Kenny here again and today I've got another hype versus reality video for you and what that's gonna entail today is the Strider SNG that's right guys this is the flame anodized uh, CPM 20 CV SNG this is the fatty so this has the SMF stock thickness which is uh, I believe 0 0.190 stock thickness but then it's put into the SNG handle with the SNG blade length and everything so you got a thicker stock but in the shorter blade length and of course smaller knife all around and um, I was super excited to get this guy in, guys. Um, I did pick this guy up secondhand, although um, they had just picked it up from the drop that was being done. So this is, it was relatively new when it got to me, had the factory edge on it and everything. So I was really excited to get this in hand. I had been wanting to try a Strider and um, just stoked to try it. And in saying so, um, this is a hype versus reality video today, guys. And we're gonna go ahead and start in the same fashion as we always do. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the specs on the page here. I don't wanna waste you guys' time spewing off a bunch of numbers. So I'll go ahead and uh, do this to get it out of the way. And then I'll go ahead and bring you guys back and we'll do some uh, size comparisons. So first things first, I'll bring in, uh, let's go ahead and bring in a American Lawman from Cold Steel. It's a very similar size knife. Um, I mean, you can almost say if you don't line up the pivots perfectly, you've got same kind of uh, overall length, just slightly shorter. And then I'll go ahead and bring in another sphere, uh, budget option. Um, this is the Civivi Backlash. Really same size knife, guys. Uh, so this is a budget option that would give you a good idea of what size that SNG is gonna be. And then next we'll go ahead and bring in some Spydercos. Got the Shaman. This is the M4 uh, Blade, Exclu Blade, Ex Blade HQ exclusive. Um, and then we got the Maximit um, Manix 2 Lightweight. which is again, a relatively similar size knife. You got some good size comparisons to do there. And then we'll go ahead and bring in some bench mates to close it out. We've got the Freak, it's the Super Freak. And um, go ahead and bring in the 940. It's because a lot of you guys have the 940. So you can see it's a relatively similar size knife to the 940 but you are gonna get a much broader handle, at least in the back. Up here, you've got about the same as the 940. Uh, back here, you got a much broader uh, tail end there. Um, so moving along, um, I'll talk really quickly about hype versus reality review. Um, we'll start with the hype, and that's gonna be what either the, you know, the manufacturer, the supplier, the, um, you know, the designer, they're all going to maybe create some hype. Uh, then you also have like the community's hype, uh, comes from YouTube reviewers, from uh, Blade Forms and all that kind of stuff. Uh, then we also have like the hype you create, you know, personal hype, the things that um, you kind of draw you to the knife. Um, in saying that, I'll go ahead and go into the hype, which with this knife, uh, there is a lot of hype, guys. Uh, positive and negative, um, just tons of hype surrounding uh, Strider in general, and then um, the SNG. So first things first, I wanna just preface this whole thing with saying I am not doing this review to um, judge Mick Strider as a person, okay? Um, or their company with the judgment calls they've made in the past with uh, whatever they're promoting on their company. Sorry guys, someone called me in the middle of my video here, so kind of cut, cut it off, but yeah, so what I was saying is, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of, you know, people, uh, this is not something to attack uh, Mick, Mick Strider. We're not, his, his personality, him as a person is not on trial here. We are talking about this knife, 
So if, if you guys want to like spill all, you know, like just talk in the comments about Mick Strider as a person, I'm just not going to respond guys because that's not what this video is about. I'm really just talking about the knife. Um, I know that Strider's been, you know, had a lot, got a lot of flack for what he's done with the military and all that stuff. Guys, I don't know about it. Okay. I'm, I've never, I've never gotten true like perspective on what's happened with what he's done. Um, it's all hearsay. It's all stuff on the internet. I'm just not going to get into that. We're not going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about this knife and we're going to talk about um, the way that this is manufactured and the way that this knife performs. That's what we're talking about today. So in saying that, um, please guys, just don't get into the whole mixed strider and the military stuff, please. Um, yeah, as far as this knife goes, uh, the hype that we've all heard is uh, Strider's manufacturing, um, how well they're made, uh, they, they, you know, their tolerances, just, just like, you know, they're just great, great work knives, you know, from what I've heard. Um, this is a good size knife for me. Um, it's in like that three and a half inch blade range, which that's kind of where I like to sit. Um, it's, it's got a, um, you know, a good size handle. Um, supposedly they have great ergonomics. Um, you know, they're just great hard, hard use kind of knives. Um, you know, I know hard use is kind of a vague term, but let's just say like, you know, if you're doing a lot of hard work and um, extended use, uh, it seems to be a good, uh, well-made knife for that. Um, they do use a lot of like uh, great steels, you know, 20 CV. Um, they also use like Z-Wear and other stuff that people don't generally use, uh, which is pretty much just like crew wear. Um, it's an analog. So like they use a lot of cool steels. They use a lot of, um, you know, good, uh, they use a lot of titanium. This is an aluminum uh this side of the handle is aluminum, so you have one titanium and then an aluminum side, um, you know, which is going to be a very strong knife. Uh, they're, they're well known for a lot of different things, guys, but uh, mostly that hard use type of knife, just well known, and just the machining that they do and the tolerances and all that. So uh, that was something I really wanted to check out. Um, also, just, I mean, usually Strider guys are like, they're like, full-blown gung-ho strider guys uh and usually when some things like that it, it there's you know something behind it you know usually the product's very well done if they have such like strong uh you know convicted uh fanboys and stuff usually there's something to it so i really wanted to get my hands on one and try it out um in saying that i got a good deal i found a, a deal online where i could get uh something that was relatively new for like the price that it was said these guys are known for being like just just blown up in the aftermarket. Uh, you hear a lot of guys saying that Strider's out of business and they're not making knives anymore. That is untrue, guys. It is untrue. Um, Strider does still make knives and they're still dropping knives all the time. Um, they just do it in drops. Like they're not in consistent manufacturing. They are, but they come in drops. So we got this drop. You know, they sold out. Then the next drop comes, they sell out. They do them in small quantities. And that's probably smart, guys, because then, you know, you get this high demand on your knives. And, and then everybody just wants to grab them as soon as they come in. So that's very smart as a businessman. Small runs. <laughs> Makes everyone just, the hype just go crazy on them. So um, in saying that, it's not exactly ideal either, because if you're looking for them, Next thing you know, on the aftermarket, they're, you know, double the price or whatever. And it's, you know, $600 when these are four seventy five dollars from, from them. And then next thing you know, there's $650 on the aftermarket. So definitely something kind of ugly with Striders is that aftermarket, uh, the secondary market on these is kind of ugly. And then all that stuff about guys saying like they're out of business. They're not out of business, guys. And that just makes them able to jack up the price on their secondary, on the secondary market. And that is not cool, guys. That is really ugly. So in that sense, uh, I, I don't think the secondary market on these is very true. I think be, be very careful when you're buying these on the secondary market, especially if they're super overpriced. Um, and yeah, that's definitely the negative hype. Uh, some of the, the positive hype also includes the uh, warranty. These are known for having an excellent warranty, kind of like a no questions asked send $25 in the knife and they send you pretty much, you know, a perfect example when it comes back. Uh, whether that needs like a blade replacement or handle replacement 
or whatever, uh, they tend to just fix it and send it back, uh, no questions asked. So that's excellent. That's really nice to see as a warranty that's, that's solid. Um, although it is voided by certain things like, um, you know, like if you, if you do anything as far as um, modifying it, forget about the warranty, guys. So don't go and etch the blade or, you know, change the scale and expect them to um, honor the warranty because they won't. So definitely something to consider. Uh, next thing, um, I'll go ahead and talk quickly about uh, the, the negative hype as far as like uh, fit and finish. I know they've gotten some negative hype as far as like lock bar stick and all these things because they don't use lock bar inserts. Um, so I've heard negative hype as far as uh, lock stick and things like that and lock slip and, um, you know, like lock failure and stuff. So I've heard some negative hype as far as that's concerned too. So I'll address that as well. Um, in saying that, I'm going to go ahead and go into the reality. Um, tons of hype surrounding this knife. And I'm going to just say right now in the reality, when I got it out of box, yeah, yeah, I actually did really like this guy when I got it out of box. Um, the look is cool. I really love the look of it. And it definitely um, kind of knocks you in the face like, damn, this is a beast. Uh, very thick stock um, with it being the the fatty, you know, so you got that nice thick stock in there slammed into a um, slab construction type of thing, but you don't have a backspacer. Uh, the one scale makes the backspacer and that connects to your titanium scale, which is a nice touch. It's just, you know, kind of seems like an integral, but it's not. Uh, so that was a nice touch and I was kind of like, ooh, that looks cool. That's good. Um, now, as far as the fit's concerned, uh, where the aluminum side meets the, the titanium, it's not a perfect fit. Uh, you can feel the edge of this in some spots, although like right here, it's nice and flush, nice and flush, but I can feel it back here, feel it right here. So it's not a perfect fit as far as that's concerned. And you guys can honestly, uh, obviously see the line there. So you can see where the two pieces meet, which, you know, it's not a big deal. Obviously we know that's where two pieces meet and you got black on kind of gray, so it's obvious. But yeah, that's uh, done well. Um, it is it is chamfered. We got some chamfer here. They're, they're definitely knocked the edge down. But as you guys can see, it's very square. It's a very square scales. Um, on the inside here, um, it is chamfered, done pretty well there. No uh, sharp surfaces on the inside and that's done very well. So I didn't notice anything necessarily on the inside. Um, as far as the fit's concerned, uh, it is very tight tolerances and you guys can see, look at how far out that, that um, brass uh, phosphor bronze washer goes. On this side, it's smaller because you gotta uh, consider the lock bar. So that side is smaller, but this side has a nice, nice, very broad bron uh, phosphor bronze washer. So that's a nice touch to give you a nice smooth and sturdy, you know, very um, secure lockup. And, and, um, and just that pivot tension is going to be nice and uh, broad. So that's very good. And then um, the finish on the blades done very nice. It's like a stone wash, almost mirror finish see my fingers there so that's very done very nice and you can see the swedge this is the drop point you can see it's in very beautiful blade shape drop point with a nice finger choil here uh, no jimping down here which i feel like is perfect there's really no need for jimping down here um, everything seems to lock in very nicely down here um, so there's no jimping there there is jimping up here which is chamfered fairly nicely um, chamfered on all edges, even the inside edges are chamfered, so that's done well. Although, right here on the handle, guys, this is not chamfered as well as the jimping out here. So I did notice some sharp edges here. Definitely some sharpness going on in the, the handle jimping. Uh, something to note. Also, as far as finish is concerned, you can see here, guys, there is really no chamfering done on this. See my nail coming off easily on that. So that is really sharp, actually. 
Although this point's knocked down, it's still fairly sharp. And this is just very sharp. It's just very sharp. Which is not ideal, guys. I feel like they should have knocked that edge down. Um, but the actual anodizing, like that heat anodizing, looks awesome. Has a really cool look to it. And I do like that a lot. And then this black aluminum's done very well. And all the machining is super crisp lines. Very nicely done. And then the anodizing on this is done very well, like almost like a powder coating. And it, it's really done nicely. And there's no marks on this uh, and on this aluminum at all. So it seems to be holding up very well. Very nicely done. And that powder coat really has a nice finish to it. Very dull, like, uh, matte look. So... Yeah, and then as far as the uh, lockup, guys, this is what everyone's kind of going to be looking at. Um, I've got about maybe 30% lockup here, and it does move if I uh, squeeze it. we got to go to about 50%, and then there's the slightest bit of uh, lock stick when I do that. Uh, when, it's, when it's normal lockup, like if I just open it, we've got no lock stick. But if I do squeeze it um, to that 50%, we do get a slight lock stick. But it's nothing dangerous. It's not like crazy lock stick where it, it doesn't want to release. So that's nothing. And in use, I didn't notice it like necessarily moving too much. Um, when I first got this, guys, uh, first thing I noticed, and I did talk about this in a recent video, very weak detent, guys. Very weak detent. So that's kind of ugly, a little bit. Um, and I didn't know that buying it. The guy said it has very weak detent. So I knew it buying it, but um, it didn't really bother me. So I said, ah, it's all good, and got it anyways. Um, but when I did first get it, it had a really, like a lot of lock slip. Like I would... I would go to squeeze on it and you'd hear it like move over and then you'd have like significant lock stick coming out. Um, and this is why I mentioned this knife in the break in, uh, break in time on my mind video because this is a very important knife in break in process. Um, when you have titanium with no lock insert going into your steel frame, I mean in your steel tang, uh, there's going to be some break in time guys where it takes some time for this face to kind of work in with the with the lock face and um, For it all to kind of fit together, right? It's just going to take some time So it's not always going to fit just perfectly uh, when I first got this it had no lock stick or slip after about a, uh, a few days It started to slip then it stopped now. I have no stick and very little slip. But that took some time for it to get like that. And I'm very happy with it now. But at first it definitely had some, some things that I didn't love about it. So that's really important to let, let your knives uh, break in and let those faces kind of um, you know interact and, and work together. So yeah, just a, something to point out there. And then um, an, another thing in the, the fit is that just the way that, um, the way these, these studs interact and they both touch perfectly, but I do get a slight bit of side to side play guys. And um, this pivot, if you guys can notice this, see how I can spin it? with my fingers. If I spin it this way and lock it up like that, this has very stiff, very stiff action. Very stiff action. Now, if I take this pivot and spin it back the other way, here we're in the loose section in the center. Now, all of a sudden, this thing has a very loose action. So, it's a little weird, guys. 
it shouldn't be able to move this pivot so easily. Um, there shouldn't be that kind of play in this whole thing. I feel like the tolerance should be a little better. Um, a little strange, guys. And I, I couldn't really break this free necessarily just by using an Allen key on this side. You, you need their spanner tool to properly do it. But um, I know I could just put a flathead in there and spin it off, but I didn't want to mess anything up because I didn't know if I was going to keep it. Uh, yeah, but just something I noticed, you know, right away was that weirdness in the pivot. And it does have a fun action with that drop free kind of action, but at a price, you know, it, it is a little, little bit of play here. You guys can even hear it as it interacts with the, the lock. There is no up and down play. And I don't get lock failure necessarily. So I don't necessarily get lock failure. But it's definitely got that element of movement in the pivot, which I can't really tighten necessarily. So uh, it's not amazing, guys, especially when you're spending $475 on a knife. Um, although with the warranty, I'm sure I could just send it in and they would fix it all, including the weak detent if I had a problem with it. So uh, something to think about. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the cutting on the uh, screen here. And I'll talk about the steel. Uh, we do have 20 CV here. And um, in sharpening, it did sharpen really easily, guys. Um, much easier than I expected it to. Um, this steel is heat treated by Peter's Heat Treat, I believe. And um, they're well known for being a very reputable company. Uh, but I did notice that this did feel soft. Not, not like soft necessarily, but it just didn't take as long as I would have expected. It, sh it reprofiled so easily, um, and, and then going through the subsequent stones, it just went very, very quickly. Um, it does seem like it might be in the lower range as far as the Rockwell hardness. Um, although I, you know, I can't say for sure. It'd be really interesting to see, and we will see what this does come up at. But uh, it sharpened very easily, and it honestly didn't even feel like 20 CV. It felt like something else. It, it just doesn't, the way it sharpened didn't feel like 20 CV. So uh, I'm really interested to see what Kurt comes up with. But uh, as far as the blade shape's concerned, when I had the factory grind on it, uh, the cutting, you're going to notice in that first amount of cutting I did, I had a lot of trouble. Um, the stock thickness com combined with the obtuse um, uh, factory grind and actually relatively dull factory grind when I, by the time I got it. Um, it, it was just a pain, guys. And this thing, this knife actually tore me up, to be perfectly honest. Um, I really had a lot of trouble in that first uh, sitting with it. And when I first finally got to put it to work, it just gave me pain, guys. And, and I'm being, uh, that's literal, guys. Uh, my hand was in pain. Um, <laughs> Uh, that's where I'm going to come into the ergonomics of this knife and everything. And this is where this um, review might take a little bit of a turn for the worse. Uh, I really, guys, um, and this really comes down to a subjective thing. I want to reiterate the fact that, you know, this is my personal opinion. And this is the way this knife affected me personally. This is what I found as far as ergonomics are concerned on this knife. I know a lot of guys probably uh, love the ergonomics of the Strider. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about ergonomics on a Strider. So I was fairly surprised to have so much trouble as far as the way this knife worked for me. Um, it just kind of poked me in every spot where I didn't want it to poke me, essentially. Um, and I did find, uh, at least on this first day, especially because of uh, how bad the edge was and how thick the stock is, I just noticed it poking me in a lot of places I did not want it to. So, I know that sounds bad, but in saying that, I'm going to go ahead and bring you guys back and kind of show you what I'm talking about. Um, 
because I know it's kind of getting neg negative here. And I'm going to have a lot of Strider fanboys kind of tearing me a new one here. Uh, no pun intended. But uh, yeah, so what I found is that the wedge effect of this handle, guys, um, I'm not s too stoked on this, this type of handle. Uh, what I noticed is that it's fairly thin in this section here and really thick in this section here. So it does lock your hand in and there's no way that this thing could come out of your hand this direction because of the shape. But what I found is that in use, um, it, this section of your hand is actually narrower than this section. So if the handle is actually tapered this way, it makes a little bit more sense with the way our hands are shaped. Because this is kind of how your hand wants to go. Thinner back here than up here. So what I found with this knife is it actually was counterintuitive in the sense of like, it's thicker back here where my pinky's shorter. And um, this did tend to dig in to my pinky right here. It, it, it felt like it was digging in. And then this back here was very square. So that got very aggressive into my hand. And um, it's just very square, guys. Everything about this knife is very square. And when I was pushing through material this way, um, where the jimping kind of, you know, where it kind of pushes you, this was digging in with that jimping, digging into the corner of my palm. Um, and then up here, which is where everyone I talked to is like, this knife feels great, choked up on it. Um, yeah, that it's very true. This fits in my hand much better up here. But um, this jimping is very aggressive. So I found it in hard use when I was pushing through tons of thick material. I found this to be digging into my, my palm as well. So it was just kind of like a triple whammy, like where like this feels kind of thin. And then the, uh, the way that that sticks up kind of jabs into your hand too. There's just a lot of elements here, guys, that just uh, did not work for me personally. Um, I didn't go into the, the blade geometry. Uh, where I think actually uh, the blade is something that drew me to it, and it still does. I love the blade. I love the shape. Um, I love how thick it is. You see that 316, almost uh, 1 1.9 or 0.19 is what it's supposed to be. It's right there. Um, and then what you have is this nice swedge keeping a lot of that thickness to the tip. You could definitely pry with that tip. Um, or at least, you know, get it into about here and pry. Uh, but I wouldn't necessarily pry with that tip there. Uh, but as far as like, you can see, this is a pretty broad blade and it comes down. You can see that's relatively thin right there. Um, I did do, I think 16, 16 degrees per side on this. And you'll see the, make sure we're zeroed out. Uh, back here by the choil, it does get a little thicker. Got about 20 thousandths right there. Um, right here in the belly, it gets nice and thin. Got about 17 thousandths. I think I got 16 at one point. Look at that, 15 thousandths, guys. 15 thousandths right there. So that's really nice. Um, and that's where this knife really definitely um, surprised me was how thin this grind gets right behind the edge. And once I put my own edge on it, it cut fairly well. There's 17 up here. Uh, and then it goes all the way thick at the tip. You're looking at, yeah, 32, 31 thousandths at the tip. So yeah, it thickens up nice at the tip, but where you need it, it gets nice and thin. So that's a really nice thing, guys. That grind um, at like 16, I think it might even be 15 thousandths, I mean, uh, 15 degrees per side on this grind, I mean, on my uh, secondary bevel. So that's really nice. You can see how thin that grind or that secondary grind is there. So I am really enjoyed it it in that sense. And when I was cutting with a fresh edge, it was enjoyable, very enjoyable to cut with this knife with a fresh edge. Um, as soon as I started reaching, getting up against resistance though, uh, that's where this knife just really pokes me. Like I said, um, you got a, a sharp corner here, you know, you got sharp jimping. Um, 
up here it does feel really good though. I did notice up here it feels pretty good. But I'm not exactly too keen on being like, okay, I have to be choked up on my knife to use it. Especially when I want to like put it to a lot of use. I like being able to come back and really hammer grip it. And But you can see too in the hammer grip, you got a really far distance from the blade. You know, inch and a half. That's a lot of distance between you and the blade with this uh, extensive sharpening choil and stuff. Uh, it just gets kind of far. So you almost have to come up here. And um, I, I mean, up here it feels pretty good. And I did notice ergonomics um, were like a lot better up here. So in saying that, I did enjoy it, using it up here, but um, just overall, it was kind of um, awkward, a little awkward to me. And just the, the shape of it just doesn't quite fit my hand. So it's very interesting, guys. I, I was not, I was, I was surprised to actually um, dislike this knife in so many ways. Uh, it actually really surprised me. And, um, I'm, I'm kind of, I was kind of bummed to be honest with you, uh, cause I had heard so much, so many good things about Strider and all these, all this stuff about Strider. And then, um, I got it and I was just like, what? Um, I, I get the whole, like, it, it's got a really durable, like really good, like hard use type of feel to it and the weight and the thickness of the stock. I love all that about it. I really do love that. But then in, in the use, like, guys, I created a lot of hype on this knife before I got it. And then when I got it, I was like, ah, I kind of hate that handle. I kind of hate the wedge. I really don't like it. Um, I'd much rather uh, a knife like this because I got this one around the same time, uh, the Microtech uh, SOCOM Elite. And you see that real simple handle? Uh, tapers at the end actually, which makes pinky a lot more comfortable. Um, this handle makes a lot more sense to me and it's very ergonomic to me. This is much more ergonomic. Um, it just, and, and this, you know, it's much more contoured here on the, on the edges. So, I mean, that's, that's what I'm talking about guys. That feels so comfortable in my hand. And even when we're talking like there's just so many things I can bring in here that 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 they want to bring it thinner here and make it nice and so it fits in your hand a little better. And that this one does wedge. You see how it wedges kind of like the Strider, but it's a lot more subtle. And I'm not going to be like barely being able to wrap my pinky around at the back here, you know, where now you got two hard surfaces going into the edge of your pinky right here. It's just not ideal guys. Um, this is just way more comfortable in hand So and and this is obviously this is my size hands guys. We're talking my size hands um, so three three and three quarter inch uh, Broadness, you know the width of my hand uh, four inches from this point to this point and six and a half from this point to this hand uh, to this point so my hand You know in my hands this just gets really fat back here um, and I've, I've heard people say, oh, the P, the, um, uh, P, what is it? The SMF, the SMF is too big. So that wouldn't work in my hand. But when I got the SNG, it worked perfect. Um, I could see where that might be the case, but for me personally, guys, it, it just pokes me in all the wrong places and I just don't love it. And I'm actually going to be selling this guys. Um, I believe, uh, Steve is going to be the new owner of this, uh, super seal Steve. And as you guys know, this might not have a tip after a little while, but uh, we'll see what he decides to do with it. Um, but yeah, uh, really surprised by that, guys. I'm really surprised by the fact that I didn't like this knife. Um, I'm going to talk about the carry a little bit before I um, go into the conclusion. Uh, weight, we're looking at 4.89, which is okay. You know, it's not super heavy. It's not super light. It's just you know, in that range of like hard use type knives in the size range. So it's about right for what I would have expected as far as weight. Um, and as far as like uh, that ergonomics guys, um, this clip, this clip works okay for going in and out. Um, although you can see it's, it, it's a straight up and down. So I didn't notice this knife. Um, another weird thing about the shape guys, another weird thing about the shape of this knife is most knives, um, when you close them, when they're sitting in your pocket, you've got it thinner up at the top and thicker at the bottom. 
Um, pretty much, I mean, just most knives have that kind of thing going on. If They're not usually thicker at the top than they are at the bottom, which actually correlates good to like being able to get in the top of your pocket. You know, that's, that's, that correlates well. Whereas with this knife, I noticed that it's so thick at the top of the pocket, I had a hard time getting in next to it with this big old corner coming out. And then it's all thin at the bottom, so stuff goes in easy, and it's or it goes in, and it's like got a lot of room at the bottom, but you can't get it out of the top, and um, it's just noticeable, which I usually don't notice. And also, like in a pocket where everything comes down to a point, like shorts pockets, I just noticed that this takes up a lot of space at the bottom, just a lot of space that it kind of seemed unnecessary to me, but. And then this clip going in and out, you got a lot of ramp going in, but then it's right on that lock bar cut out and it tends to get bunched up coming out. And it's very sharp on the edges of this cutout, just like here, very sharp. So it did kind of tear the pocket up. You can see my skin right there just from touching it. I mean, so that's kind of, you know, kind of weird. And then that point sticks up into my hand that's kind of like a kind of gnarly point there. Um, I do like this spring, just spring clip, very simple, very easy, um, but just not that well executed in my in my opinion. I like the one screw with just that locating pin. It's kind of a nice touch, but um, yeah, just not stellar, guys, for me. Not stellar. Um, and saying that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up and just say, uh, I was surprised by not loving this knife, and um, I'm bummed, you know, I really am. But it's going to get passed along, and someone else will love it, and that's just the way knives are. They're very uh, subjective things. Um, oh, one other thing I wanted to point out that I thought was an interesting choice. Uh, guys, look at that lanyard. What the hell? Just some interesting choices made here. I don't think your lanyard's gonna last too long. Um, although I did hear like you do it a certain way where it goes through this hole and then this hole and it comes up to the top so that it, your uh, blade doesn't touch it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's still kind of weird, it's interesting choice. I would say just forget about the lanyard, to be honest, or put it up here where there's like no man's land where there's nothing going on. But yeah, just interesting choice. Anyways, uh, yeah, I do believe that this is a lot of wasted space right here that could have been, um, they could have done something different, but this is, it's, it's the Strider shape. So this is what they're known for is the shape. And um, for a lot of guys, it probably works well. Uh, for me personally, I did not find it to be that way at all. Um, I found this to be a very interesting and uncomfortable shape. Uh, the wedge is not my style, I guess. So, hey, thanks for watching, guys. I hope that I don't get bashed too hard for um, giving a negative review on this knife. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it brought some value to you guys. And um, thanks for watching. Thanks for your subs. Thanks for your likes and dislikes and whatever, um, all your comments. Have a great day.